Hi there, welcome to Fix It. Uh, I just want to show you another one of our uh, common problems that we come across. And here we have a, what's this? Let me see on the back. It's a 12 volt adapter and it has, on the other end, it has a little power, power plug on the end of it. And this 12 volt adapter has, basically it's come adrift. It's been sort of half repaired before. As you can see, somebody's uh, quite neatly, it's actually come off now, but uh, somebody's split the wires here and wrap some insulating tape around one of them. It's very important, this is actually quite dangerous because even though it's only 12 volts, these things can still, still spark and they can still cause, uh, cause an electrical fire if it's next to something flammable. Um, so it's not safe to use them if in this state. Uh, but what happens normally is uh, I take this piece of uh, insulating tape off Yeah, so yeah, that's been rejoined. But what happens is they get twisted around, the insulation breaks, and then the two bits of wire short out, and basically it won't function anymore. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna keep a careful note here of which one's which. No, I'm just gonna mark it with a, because I know this is the right polarity at the moment, I'm gonna mark it with a, with a marker pen, just so I know which wire goes on where. So here we go. Just mark that with a bit of a bit of marker, and mark the cable as well. So I'll cut these cleanly with a pair of snips. And I'll show you how to strip them if you don't have some fancy wire strippers. If you've got fancy wire strippers like this one, it's really nice and easy. So you'll see, you put it in there like that, and it strips your wire quite beautifully. Yeah, but if you don't have that, I'll just show you again. Sorry, we're losing a little bit of our cable here. If you don't have that, you can use a Stanley knife or a scalpel. So if you're a little bit short on resources, and what you do is you just use your finger, be careful you don't cut it, but if you press the, the Stanley knife against the cable and you roll the cable across the blade, make sure it's a nice sharp blade, yeah? And be careful you don't stick yourself with the knife because we don't want to have to fill in the accident book. Okay, then what you've done is you've cut the cable there, you can see, you should be able to just pull that off the end there. There we go, and we've got some spare wire there. So once again, just roll the cable around the end of the knife, so you don't nearly need to move the knife, you just need to hold it steady. And then you can bend it, and you should, it should just break the any bits that are left if it doesn't quite do it roll it around again if you haven't cut all the way through it's a little bit tricky because it takes a bit of an art to it but uh, but if you haven't got fancy wire strippers then that'll help you and then it always it's always good to give the wires a twist together so that you don't end up with any strays because if you try and solder this one here you see you got sort of spare bits of wire floating around there then once they get solder on them they stay like that so they don't move so it's good just to twist them round twist 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 until you end up with I don't know if you can see that a very neat wire on the end of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that in the uh, place that in the uh, helping hands I'm going to get the solder now and the solder. Right. Always give the soldering iron a wipe before and after use on the wet sponge. And it'll keep your tip nice and clean then. There you go. 
just tin the wires so just so they turn silver there you go now they're ready to solder onto something else right on the other end it's going to be slightly more difficult to do because I don't really want to cut because because that's already been cut where the damage was it's already been cut quite close to the uh, to the end if you're really desperate and you are running out of uh, you're running out of uh, of cable to attach to you can cut you can carefully with a with a knife you can actually remove this by cutting into it carving away probably better done with a craft knife than a stanley knife and uh, and you can carefully expose the cables and then when you've attached your wire you can insulate them and you can put some sugru around it as a strain relief or something similar right but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to twist these wires to tidy them up right well, that's quite a long bit there so that could cut down a little bit there maybe yeah so we're going to attach our wires there so that's the one with the mark on it. Make sure we get them the right way around. So where's our, there we go. All right, it should correspond to there. So we're gonna go in like this. So what I can do now to insulate these, I showed you before you could do it with, uh, with, um, uh, with, insulation tape with uh, with electrical tape there's a, a fancier way of doing this and a, a nicer way of doing it as well which is to use something called shrink wrap now this stuff you can put a little bit over the top of the cable now that fits really loosely there now but if you heat it up what it does is it shrinks and it it will form a very tight bond over the top of where we've soldered our joint so what I'll do is I'll cut a little bit of this in half. So I'll cut a length of that. Right, and I'll put it over the cable. Now I'll pull the cable back a bit here because what you don't want to do is when you're soldering, it actually it can heat this up and it can shrink before you've uh, moved it into position. Okay, so we're just going to push the shrink wrap quite far back. And then we're going to put another bit of shrink wrap over the top. Right, so now we've got our wires nicely tinned. Just going to check which one is which. So, all right, so there's the wire we marked on the top. And wire we marked on the top there. Okay. So, just do this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to gently just heat it until the solder melts and they should bond together quite nicely, these two. There we go. Okay, that's one. And the good thing is about them when they've got the solder on, you can bend them into position. Right, so we'll do the other one. Not as neat a job. There we go. So we just touch them together with the soldering iron. Right, and then you can slip the uh, 
the shrink wrap into position. You can either use a lighter and wave it over the top, or if you haven't got a lighter, handy, and you can just gently use a soldering iron. But take your time, because they will shrink eventually, but just patience. Patience, and uh, you can just gently stroke them with the iron, so as not to melt anything underneath. You don't want to melt your insulation on your cables underneath. So just keep keep going at it. It is actually quicker with a with a flame. Or if you have a heat gun, that's the other thing. You could blast some heat at it, like a hair like um hair dryer probably wouldn't quite do it, but uh, might stand to be corrected on that. Maybe some people have very hot hair dryers. But, uh, if your hair dries enough to do heat shrink, I wouldn't say it's uh, going to be too good for your hair. The adverts are to be believed. Okay. All right. So that's shrunk down nicely over the joins there. Um, you'd be surprised, it'll always be a little bit extra shrinkage. You can always find a little bit more. Yeah, you see, I don't want to caught it a little bit there, just in the middle. Right, there you go. So that's insulated these two wires from each other. So they're never going to touch each other, and it would be fine like that. You could put some Sugru or some tape over the top of that. But I put this extra bit of heat shrink on over the top here. So that can sit, actually it'll even go over the cable strain a bit there. Push it on as far as I can get it, because that'll be nice and tight. And then we'll just do the same again with this. Might fast forward this. So hot air gun would be by far the best way, because you leave a little bit of a uh, little bit of solder trace on the top of it there, which you can just scrape off. It's all right, but it's a little bit messy. And if you use a lighter flame, you leave it a little bit blackened with uh, with soot if you're not careful as well. So um, problems with each way of doing it, but the heat gun would be the best. Anyway, there's our fix. So thank you for watching.